coming up in two weeks. It is Shamrock FC Assault from the Ameristar Casino in Kansas City, Missouri. And it's going to be headlined by welterweight matchup Bobby Volker and Kyle Kirst. Now joined by one of the men that you're going to be able to see on the preliminary car, which is available on shamrockfightingchampionships.com. It is Ken Hooten, who's one to know he's going to be taking on Felix Santanilio. Ken, appreciate the time. Uh, obviously, you won your amateur debut uh, recently, and now you're, you're returning to the cage here. So first off, how did you uh, make that decision of, you know what, you wanted to become a, a fighter? Well, I grew up with a bunch of friends that were involved in it, <clears throat> and I used to train with them some, and I did a lot of sparring with them and all, and over the years, they tried to talk me into it, and finally I decided to go ahead and give it a try. You know, guys always talk about, you know, there, there's a big difference between, you know, doing your work in the gym and, and actually on, on fight night. So when, when it comes to your amateur debut, what do you remember most about that night? Uh, the the anxiety once the fight was over with and everything was done it all hit me and just uh my blood pressure went sky high and it was just it, it was a rush so it'd be hard to explain but the anxiety but once everything happened what had just happened hit me uh, it was it was pretty big rush and pretty exciting do you is there anything else that you have done that you've got that type of, of rush uh, in your in your body doing that is there anything else that you've done throughout your life that's giving that same type of rush uh, not a whole lot. A few years ago, I went and got certified as a flyboard instructor and flyboarding is a similar sensation to that. It's just, it's, it's, there's, there's no real words to explain it. What is flyboarding? Uh, it's a jet pack that you strap onto your feet and it hooks to the back of a wave runner by a hose. And I fly around between 20 to 40 feet over the water and do backflips and porpoise like dolphin dives in and out of the water and things like that. Are you a little bit of a thrill seeker? Just a little bit. I kind of, I, I rode some bulls when I was younger and did a bunch of that stuff. And it's, uh, it's been in dirt track racing and it's, it's kind of been a lifelong pursuit. In terms of when did you at what age did you start riding bulls? Uh, thirteen. I rode in the Mocan youth rodeos for a while. It, was there? Did you ever think about being like a, a professional bull rider, or was that just something that it was just kind of something fun you did? Uh, that was just something kind of fun. I grew up on a farm with a bunch of horses and used to do a bunch of competitive horse riding and things like that and go to rodeos, and that was just kind of one of the next steps to take. And I, I, I felt like I was up for it, so I did. And, of course, you got this fight coming up here, Shamrock FC Assault against Felix Santanilio. For, first off, uh, for fans who, who may have never had a chance even to see your amateur debut, how would you describe yourself as a fighter? Uh, I, I do a lot more stand up fighting. I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of ground game and if I have to use it, I will, but I prefer more of the stand up striking. Uh, I've did most of my studying and training in Muay Thai and things like that. And that's just where my heart is. So I, if, if they like to stand up and fast pace strike force type fights, that's what I'm all about. Trying to keep it up on the feet and keep it moving. What do you think about your opponent here? I mean, and I know sometimes at the amateur level, sometimes it can be hard to, to find even footage on your opponent, but but what do you see in him? He looked like he was in decent shape. I didn't see any of his fight footage or anything, but I saw it went to the third round and he ended up losing to a submission. So that kind of, I, I don't know if he trains more for ground fighting or what happened there, but uh I'm going to try to keep everything from going to the third round if I can. And is that kind of one of the hardest things about, you know, being on the amateur scene is that for a lot of fights, you for pretty much you're walking into them dark. You, you may not, you know, you may not even know, hey, you know, the type of stance that, that the fighter has. Is that one of the toughest things? Yeah, yeah, just the uncertainty of how they train and what they're good in and what I need to watch out for them doing things like that, the little, little telltale things they do before they throw a punch or a kick or something, I and mean, then you kind of miss out on that kind of stuff. How much do you go back and just and and just in your your day to day uh, training? Do you just kind of go back and maybe look at, at footage of yourself to just try to do the self evaluation and figure out, you know, hey, is there tendencies I'm doing that I need to correct? Things along those lines. 
Uh, a little bit I do, and that's some of my friends. We spar a little bit and try to point out things like that to one another. We notice. Uh, I try not. I work out on the bags and everything a lot, and don't do near as much sparring because I just don't. Uh, I've always felt the sparring kind of got you in the habit and made a person practice at pulling their punches and intentionally missing. And I like to when I when I'm practicing throwing punches, I like to full, throw them full force and drive all the way through, just like I'm in a fight. And of course, that's something that you can't really do in sparring. Is it? I mean, I think Robbie Lawler is probably the most kind of famous for you know really talking about the the really lack of sparring that he does. Do you kind of feel like it's going to prolong what you can do in the sport by, by not you know? Because there's some guys who, who say, "Hey, I spar two three times a week." Yeah, I, as far as the cardio and everything, I think it helps a lot. And some of the guys are are better at changing over the sparring to the fight, I guess. But I. Uh, Really, other than a cardio workout, I don't I don't really get a whole lot from it because, like I said, I've done a bunch of sparring before and then got in with the headgear on and all with some friends to actually go at it a little bit heavier. And I just uh, I have a tendency to throw my punches just a little bit short and not carry through and all. And that's just I I I think as far as myself is concerned, it helps the lack of sparring. How tough has this camp been? Because, you know, obviously it's the holiday season and, you know, people are having parties, get together with family, and, and there's all the, the good food you want to eat. I mean, is that kind of one of the toughest battles you have in, in preparing for this fight is just, you know, making sure that your your diet's on point and, and you're going to be able to make weight uh, here on January 16th? Yeah, that's been one of the hardest things with the season and everything because I, I had to drop anyway. I walk around a little over 170, and uh, I, I was dropping for the fight anyhow, but with the holiday season coming through, everybody's making candies and pies and everything. That just kills me sitting there. just have to watch everybody eating all of it. <laughs> You know, there, there's been obviously been a lot of talk about uh, proposed new weight divisions coming to MMA. Um, you know, potentially getting rid of 170. You know, adding a, a 165 pound weight class. Is that is that something that you kind of like that idea of, of? Maybe you know, if you get to the point you say, "Man, I, I don't know if I want to try to get down to 155 anymore," that you would look at a 165 pound weight class. Yeah, I I'd love something like that because it's real easy. Uh, I dropped about six or eight pounds right after I heard that I was getting the fight, and I posted it, and I've been maintaining right here one sixty two to one sixty four, right in that range. It's real easy for me to maintain there. I don't have to starve myself too much, and uh, I I'd, I'd really enjoy a weight class right there. Uh, in, in terms of this fight, uh, how do you see it going down? Uh, I, I I hate to make predictions like that, but like I said, I I like to stand up. I'm pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got so uh, everybody's told me I've got really fast hands, and I'm gonna try to make a show and end it in the first round is the way I I foresee it. And of course, this fight is gonna be part of Shamrock FC Assault January 16th at the Maristar Casino in Kansas City, Missouri. Information on the event, shamrockfightingchampionships.com. You can find out where you can purchase tickets. Also, you can find out information if you're not in the Kansas City area where you can watch this event online. Ken, I really appreciate time, and good luck in the fight, man. No problem. Thank you. You have a good day.